Hey everybody, I'm Heidi from Hands Occupied here with another knitting tutorial for you today. In this video, we are going to attack one row buttonholes, which actually can be used for making more than just buttonholes. Let's dive in. Taking a look at my knitting here, you can see a few buttonholes and why this technique is called a one row buttonhole. All three of the buttonholes lined up here were knit in the same single row, hence one row buttonhole. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna show you how to work a single one row buttonhole in the middle of this next row. To do this, we're going to work the first few stitches of our row until we get to the point where we want our buttonhole to be. To begin our one row buttonhole, we're going to bring our working yarn to the front of our work and slip the next stitch before returning the working yarn to the back of our work. Now we're going to slip the next stitch from our left needle to our right before passing the second stitch over it on the right needle, binding off one stitch. Now we're going to slip a stitch and pass the previous stitch over to bind off another. We're going to keep binding off in this manner until we have worked the correct amount of buttonhole stitches that our pattern calls for. I'm counting my stitches here to confirm I have bound off the number of stitches needed for this one row buttonhole. Now it's time to slip the last stitch from the bind off we just did back onto the left needle. Next, we're gonna turn our work to the wrong side even though we have not yet finished the row. Then we need to take the working yarn between our needles to the back of our work. Right now we're looking at the wrong side or the purl side of our work. To continue our one row buttonhole, we're going to insert the right hand needle in between the first two stitches on the left hand needle. You might recognize this form of casting on as a cable cast on from other knitting projects. With our needle inserted, we're going to wrap the working yarn around the right hand needle and draw up a loop before popping it back onto the left hand needle. We're going to repeat the process of inserting our working needle in between the first two stitches on our left hand needle, drawing up a loop and placing it back on the left hand needle. You're going to need to cast on one more stitch than the number of stitches you bound off in the first part of the one row buttonhole making process. For instance, if you bound off five stitches, you're going to need to cast on six, and in a moment, you'll see why. Now it's time to turn our project back to the right side and bring the working yarn in between the needles back to the wrong side. Right here is where that extra cast on stitch comes into play. You're going to slip a stitch from the left hand needle to the right hand needle and you're going to pass the last cast on stitch, that extra stitch, over it, binding off one final stitch to complete your one row buttonhole. From there you can simply finish working the row in pattern. I'm going to speed things up here and work another wrong side row so you can see what the one row buttonhole looks like right here at the end of the row it's worked on and how it looks after you've worked a row or two. As you've seen in this video, knitting a one row buttonhole involves binding off and then casting on a number of stitches to create a hole in your knitting. Even though this is a buttonhole technique, you can use it to create things like thumb holes in fingerless mittens, decorative elements, and more. This is what the finished one row buttonholes look like. That row of three in the middle is what it looks like when you work several of them subsequently one after the other in a single row, for your reference. And that was how to work a one row buttonhole in knitting. If you've got any questions, go ahead and reach out in the comment section. Give us a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and subscribe for even more yarn craft tutorials. I've been Heidi and thank you so much for watching.